As Orpheus emerges from the underworld, he also enters a new phase in his life. According to Ovid's version of the myth, after losing his wife, Orpheus forswears women and begins to take young male lovers. Thus, Orpheus's return to earth is also the moment of his birth into homoeroticism. Out of desire and grief, another desire is born. And out of that new desire also springs another grief, for Orpheus comes to a terrible end. Enraged by his rejection of women, Dionysian priestesses attack him and tear him to pieces. They throw his head into the river, where it floats, still singing to the island of Lesbos. Sean Michelle Smith, Photography Between Desire and Grief. Laboratory. Where sky opened, the reflections of our faces twisted into themselves like weeds. Where we licked, lake water thickened with algae and herbs, minuscule fans which pricked, left webbed tracks on our fingers. See here what's been the problem. What's been eating the good plant sun, sister's fist of wet tendrils held out for us to examine with vials of chemicals, anger, deposit, stay. We tested the soil gummed to the roots, grown on spoiled weather water, which had produced umbrellas in the wild, but in petri dishes, sludge. We were made for each other. We were enemies. Wind boiled the lake and frightened the scattered. Vague gray under the destiny we fought over with long boat hooks, with our trained diving birds, sleek missile predators, the taste for raw grease and ligaments behind our teeth, terrifyingly possibly permanent.